about to give you just what you need. God is about to. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in again to Revolution TV. I'm your boy Smith. We are here live at the Revolution in the studio. The studio, y'all, for Celebrate. And I am here with Dr. Jamal Glenn, the senior pastor here at the Revolution. How are you doing today, sir? Good. 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 Good, man. It was an awesome night. We're here in the Afterglow for Celebrate. Yeah, man. Man, tell me about what was your idea behind Celebrate? How did you come up with the concept and why was it important for you to present this to the revolutionaries tonight? I don't know, you know, like, this is our eighth year uh, celebration. God has been faithful to us. We planted our church, and here we are eight years later. And um, I'm such a futurist, a forward thinker, always what's next, what's next, what's God saying next, what he's doing next. And, you know, celebrate is just a moment. You know, it's a state. It's just pause, reflect, thank God for where you are, where you've been, what he's done. And it's always a good time to live in a constant state of celebration. Or praise, but I thought it out the pro that we just marked this moment this weekend by just saying, Hey, God, we just want to thank you. Just stamp it with a celebrate, and it's cool that the eight is in the celebrate. And we made it happen and made it all come together just to say thank you, God, for an amazing eight years and um, seven in completion. And now we're ready for a new beginning and see what it is that you want to do with our church beyond the four walls of the building. Put your mark on us. So for those people who were not here, shame on you, you missed out. We had Travis Green, yes. KJ Scriven, yes. and the Playmakers. Yes. How did you and Rob Smith all the way from LA? <laughs> he came back home. Absolutely, always gonna go. So tell me, how did you come up with the lineup? Like that's a that's a nice cohesive mesh. Like, yeah. how, what were you thinking? I don't know. You know, somebody else said that to me tonight. They was like, you know, I would have never really put these together, but this lineup was incredible. Um, I'm a relationship person. So because I'm a relationship person, I, I care about people that have relationships and those that I have a relationship with. So uh, the Playmakers, of course, they're great friends. Uh, they have a relationship with each other. They're hilarious. They they're are hilarious. Pioneers. They're innovators. They took a, a social media platform and utilized it. Uh, didn't wait for anybody to give them a chance. They planted a movement in YouTube land. You know what I'm saying? For all the video, for all to see. And they just took what's natural, what's real, what happens in the real world, especially in a black church, and they made us laugh in stitches. Oh, so they have goodness. natural relationships, and I like that. I, I, we reached out to them. They were the kindest guys. No extra, no glamour, no Hollywood. They were just down to earth guys, real authentic, real good. We invited them to come, they accepted the invitation and they came. And of course, KJ and Travis been here before. I love them guys, they, they, they're my bros. I'm so proud of them. I pray over them, I pray for them, I connect with them. I wanna see God push them, push them, push them far, take them higher. They're innovative, they're creative, and they're best friends. So again, they have relationships. Relationship. So I have a relationship with them, they have a relationship with each other, and everybody has a relationship. When relationship is present, then it's real, hence relationship. So it's not work, it's authentic, it's going to flow, it's going to happen. And so tonight what you have was, of course, laughter, which the Bible says is like medicine, and then worship, which brings you in the presence of God for healing. So you got medicine, you got healing, and when you bring that together, you get a little laughter, then you open up yourself, let it go of your troubles, you can celebrate, you can worship in the presence of the Lord, because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. This is a smart man, y'all. <laughs> he, he didn't sit up and thought about all this. Y'all <laughs> laughed, y'all sung the songs, but he came up with the science behind it. So like, about, now comedy, you know, church people can be stuffy. Yeah. You know, we're not supposed to laugh in the sanctuary, you yeah. know. But, like, how important do you think that comedy is or laughter is to the church? Well, I mean, the Bible says, like I said, laughter does the heart marry like medicine. So, laughter is good. People don't laugh enough. They're stuffy. People going through enough. they got hard times. Life is so serious. And it is. But laughter lets you live longer. Like, laugh. Like, wear it light. Take it lightly. And just enjoy yourself. And when stuff is funny and it's real good, clean comedy, we got so much comedy out there that's vulgar and all this other stuff. When you just can just laugh and not take it so serious. I mean, that's where the joy of the Lord is. And as a church right now, we just need to be, God doesn't want to segregate our life. You're not be stuffy when you come to the building. Or when, you, when you live for him, you look like you've been sucking on lemons and, you know, got your lip poked out. No, when you live for God, that's the happiest time. That's the best time in your life. 
And so sometimes you just need to sit back, sit down, and laugh a little because it'll let you live a little. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking of laughing a little, like we all know you and people who know you, we know you got a whole lot of swag. But I want to <laughs> ask you, when was the last time that you were genuinely embarrassed? Gen and what happened? Genuinely embarrassed. You know, I don't know because I don't take myself that serious. People, I'm a, people think I'm a serious person, you know, and I am serious about living, but I can't really think about a time when I was like embarrassed because if it was funny to you, it, it was, was funny, funny to funny me, to you. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, uh, you know, I, I laughed, I tripped out. So I don't know, I don't get embarrassed easy because if it's funny, it's funny and that's just it. So I, I, now I've laughed at myself plenty of times and uh, there's plenty of things that I've done that's funny and I crack myself up. Yeah. You know? So, but I, I don't try to wear, wear it so serious. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect and I make mistakes and I do things that's humorous all the time. That's good. You just gotta be present to see. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I see you out there on the stage doing a little bit of singing a little bit. No. If you, a little bit. If you, were, if you were a recording artist, what was your album sound like? Man, I don't know. I hope that, I hope that, well, I kind of am a recording artist because every single week I get recorded on RevolutionCM.tv, preaching, teaching. We Shameless almost, love. We, always, we almost always hear a song of the Lord and sure. deliver it. And though I'm not the best singer, I hear medleys, I'm artistic, I'm creative, and I have a great group of musicians that follow and flow with me, and we almost create something every single week. See, I'm a creative at heart, so it's really not just music as an expression. It might be dance, it might be rap, it might be a song, it might be a story, because I'm a creative. I think we're all creative beings. God, the Father, is the creator, and he breathed his spirit into us and that, and he created us. So he created us with creativity, and everybody is creative, whether they feel like it or think they are not. They just have to let their inhibitions go and allow God to orchestrate and move through their lives and let him draw with their life or let him make a medley with their life. So actually, we've been in the studio, uh, our music team uh, writing and, and we wrote some songs. And so you will hear soon what a song would sound like that we wrote because we wrote a couple. We wrote about eight songs just the other week that we're about to release on a project. And so you'll hear some songs that we wrote and what they sound like and then you'll tell me the kind of song that I make, you know, along with my incredible uh, music stuff. You said something interesting about we're all creatives, whether we're creating or not. Yeah. And I was sitting there thinking, like, even if you're creative and you're not creating, you're still creating. And what the product you're creating is nothing. That's yes, right. You're literally creating nothing. Yes. We all have an ability to create. And I just think everybody don't give themselves. They say, well, I'm not that creative, but it's, it's not possible um, for you. Some of us are more apt to creativity because we're more open or, or more loose. You're a creative being yourself. You don't mind expressing yourself in every way. The way we dress, the way we talk, the way we carry ourselves, what we do, what we create. But God put, put us all in this world. He said, be fruitful and multiply. And that's not just to create children or babies through marital situations, but that's also be fruitful and multiply. Whatever I put in your hands, that's potential. Turn your potential into produce something, to create something. The world should be better because you exist. Life should be better. You, you want to lead this life having produced something, having created something, having left a mark and a memory. And, and so uh, we have to open ourselves up to that creativity. Um, and allow God to use us. I would definitely agree that you are creative and I believe you know, you're a great pastor, great leader, great mentor. If you weren't doing any of that, what career or profession would you be surrendering your time to? How, what, where could we find you? What would your resume say? You know, that's the question that everybody want to know. And uh, I think the, the real answer is that even though I'm pastoring, I hope that the expression of who I am comes through my pastor and that I'm not limited or boxed in by the revolution, that they get me, they understand who I am. And pastoring, my calling as a pastor, lends me the platform to exhibit everything else that I am. So you will see me in a studio. You will see me writing plays. You will see me finding and empowering people. You will see me coaching people. You will see me helping uh, market and, and stimulate ideas. You will see me finding talents and gifts and giving them platform and opportunity to express who they are. So that's one of the beautiful things about the church, especially the local church, is that people, when they lend their gifts and talents that God gave them to God, mm -hmm. they get opportunities that they would have probably never gotten unless they were 
college degree, skilled for it, but the body of Christ allows you to learn through a process. It's like a university. Exactly. It lets you serve on a, on a media team where you're operating million dollar, I mean thousand dollars worth of camera equipment. It lets you pr pr uh, produce music and it lets you uh, work lights and lets you uh, learn how to speak and learn how to teach. And so uh, through the body of Christ in this movement called The Revolution, uh, my wife and I are privileged to pastor some insanely innovative, creative people that have some wonderful ideas, business owners, entrepreneurs, I mean, all types of stuff. And so we pride ourselves in the opportunity that God trusted us to nurture and develop these gifts and talents. And so we find and we discover talent, we give it platform and we create. So everything that I would be doing, I would probably still be doing because everything I do is authentic, just who I am, just pastoring gives me an opportunity to channel that behavior and lend my calling to provide a career. vehicle. Exactly, for me to, for God to be able to use and pull it out of me. So I teach, I, I, I reach, I learn, I study, I listen, I do everything, and I thank God they called me into the ministry because really, it's no boundaries, there's no limits. And uh, I mean, we're sitting in our church that has a studio, mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? For us to create music, that's, that's, that's rare, mm -hmm. you know? So, if we wake up and say, hey, let's make a song, hey, we can just come to the studio and make a song. So, no limits. Yes. Well, we're also grateful that God made you a pastor. We're so grateful. And thank you yeah. so much for putting on this Celebrate uh, experience. It was off the chain. And thank you so much for talking to me here at Revolution TV. Man, you heard it here from the man. He, he, he. Hey, what more can I say? <laughs> I'm your boy, Smith. This is Revolution TV. And I am here with Dr. Jerome Glenn. We'll see you soon. It's awesome to be here, and uh, thank you for your talents, man. I'm proud of you, everything God is doing in your life, everything he's going to do in your life. We sent you off to L.A., and uh, you are under great leadership there. And uh, just thank God for the deposit and the time that we had to share. Good sons always come home. And so we're proud of you as we see you on TV, red carpets, uh, uh, interviewing. May God bless your ministry and bless your efforts as you uh, go into that realm and that mountain. And uh, thank you for always being true to here and uh, coming back and uh, being a part of what, what God is doing here as well. So we just expanding our borders and extending it. I'm proud of you, sir. Keep it up. All thank right. you, sir. Love you, man. God bless you. That's Smith TV, right? Right there, worldwide. Check it out. <laughs>